What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rome's Cozy Kitchen, a show where I make the coziest, toastiest meals around in the land. All right, and today we got a special one for you. We are gonna be making baked ziti. All right, you can make this in under 45 minutes if, if, if you play your cards right and you, and you pay attention. I'm just excited for this dish, I love it so much. It's something my mom would make for me and my brothers. So let's, you know, let's get into it, I'm hungry. I just had some coffee. What pairs better with coffee than baked ziti? So there's steps to this, all right? You can't just go in there all willy-nilly. First things first, I turn my oven on to 350. I got my pasta water boiling with a wee bit of salt. Chop these onions and garlic. And we're gonna mix the cheeses. We got some ricotta, parm, and some mozzarella. This is just gonna add that unctuous creaminess. I'll do a little black pepper too. And then we mix. And this is what's gonna go right on top of it and melt and ooze in. Ooh la la. Look at that, easy. Put ZD cheese mixture. Boom. And we'll set this to the side. Then we'll start making this sauce. It's sauce building time. What you're gonna do is you're gonna preheat your Dutch oven on like medium, medium low heat. You're gonna add that olive oil. Then we're gonna add our onions and we're gonna let that sweat and saute for about two minutes. Once we get that going, we're gonna add the sausage. When you add that sausage, be sure to keep moving it around and breaking it up with the back of like your spoon or spatula, whatever utensil you're using. That's gonna make a really nice sauce. Once we get that going, we're gonna add the chili flakes. Then we're gonna add the garlic and we're gonna cook for an additional minute while moving that around. You don't wanna burn your garlic. Now we're gonna add the tomato paste. And we're gonna work this a lot to make sure the tomato paste gets covered with everything. Once we do that, we're gonna add some chicken stock and a can of crushed tomato. About 28 ounces of that, boom. Mix that around. You're gonna bring the heat up to medium high. You're gonna get it to a boil, stir it, stir it, and then put that back to medium low and let that cook for 10, 15 minutes until you get the sauce consistency that you're looking for. I like mine to be saucy, but a little loose too, you know what I mean? Cause it's gonna cook some more in the oven. And also when we're cooking this pasta, you're gonna wanna cook your pasta to two to three minutes less than the box directions. Cause we're gonna be cooking it more in the oven. You don't want super soft, mushy pasta. You want a little bite to it. You want it to be substantial. You wanna make sure that you wanna know it's there. And this is looking good, honestly. This is how I like it. A little thick, a little loose, not too crazy. This sauce is looking good. I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna start adding my noodles to this pot. What I like to do, since I've did the noodles first, they're nice and you can, you can hold it. I just like to break it up like that and throw them in there. And they're gonna soak up that sauce. That's gonna be a beautiful thing. Honestly, literally one of my favorite dishes. I can't, I can't stop saying that like. So we mix the noodles into the sauce. Now we're gonna start building this beautiful ziti and get into the oven. Now we get to actually build this ziti. So I'm gonna get all this into my bacon dish. I'm just gonna layer it up really nice. It smells so good. Now cheese mixture. And we just gonna dollop it on. It's a little, little divots in there. You see what I'm doing there? Do you see that? If you're having a get together with some homies, bring this, all right? This feeds a lot of people. So look at that. I like to push it on the sides like this. Boop, boop, boop. And then there's more cheese. We're gonna sprinkle mozzarella and we're gonna get the sides for sure because we want that to be crispy. Get it over top, boom, boom, boom. And also, I got a little bit of basil. I'm gonna sprinkle that over top because basil is delicious. Now, I'm gonna throw this in the oven. It's preheated already, 350 for 20 to 25 minutes. Pretty much, you want this cheese to be crispy, gooey, and good. It's already the noodles and everything in the sauce, obviously, is cooked already. So, we're just browning up this cheese. Growing up, baked ziti was made usually in the 
when it was cold. We never had it in the winter. I mean, in the summer, that's just weird. We would have it usually in the winter, fall time. In black households, we just make everything for Thanksgiving. Put in the comments if that's true or not. But we make, we made ziti, uh, it would be like meatloaf, turkey, obviously stuffing. Um, so we would have it then. Also, when we would like go to like um, someone else's like Thanksgiving or holiday party or something like that, we would take it. But mainly in the crib, me and my brothers feasting on it with some garlic bread, the long French baguette one or whatever that's called. <sighs> that, a little salad with some wishbone dressing. And you call it, you call, you call that dinner. But I love them. My mom would usually do ground beef, a lot of seasonings in there, like onion powder, garlic powder, sasson. So really unconventional ziti, but it tastes amazing. And it made me in the man that I am today. So what makes my ziti different than the one I grew up on? One thing, meat choice. Uh, we usually use the ground beef, like I said before. This one has hot Italian sausage. All right, that's just like, that's just Flavor Town with a little spice right there. Well, I can't believe I just said Flavor Town. And also a lot of red chili flake. This one, I just wanna amp up the spice level because you got that creaminess from the ricotta and the mozzarella mixture there. That can cool you off while you're eating that hot, spicy, chili-filled red sauce. You know what I mean? It's balance right there. Look at this. Beautiful dish right here. You can hear the cheese. It's getting crispy and bubbling away. So as excited as I am, and you are for me to eat this, we gotta let this rest. We gotta let it rest for about 10, 15 minutes, or else it's gonna be a hot, soupy mess. If that's what, you know what I'm saying? I, my suggestion is to wait that time, okay? You could eat it faster too and get more. So, you know, blowing on it and waiting and wasting time. But while we're waiting for this to cool, this is a perfect opportunity for you to get this recipe. Where can you get this recipe? You don't know, you're watching this video, let me guide you. First things first, like and subscribe to Food52 down below. It don't cost you nothing, all right? And then you go to the website, food52.com. You can find this recipe and many more cozy recipes for me or the other homies that be hanging out in the residential hall, okay? Just do it, click it now. We will stop everything, click it right now. That's like the perfect bite right there. Ooh, that's creamy, that's spice. That's nice. Mm. I might put a little salad together while I'm eating this. But this is this is perfect right here. You got the, the spice at the end though, you get it? You chewing it up, then it's like, ooh, okay, that's different. This spells C O Z Y. Cozy. This is so good. I'm Rome. Another successful cozy kitchen. Cheers. Cheers to you and yours.